Wake Up. Written and narrated by Lady Spukaria. It has been a long time since I've spoken about this. There are many things it becomes difficult to speak about. Since my family don't talk about it, I've wondered whether it was just a dream or perhaps even an overactive imagination. The nightmares continue to linger. Every now and then, they come up. A reminder of an event from the past. My family and I used to travel quite frequently. It was normal for us to travel around the country. My parents always believed it was good to get out and see everything. Usually, though, we ended up around bodies of water. Water always had a soothing element to it. It didn't matter whether it was a lake, a pond, a river, or even the ocean. My mother, especially, loved to be around water. My dad would be happy because he could go fishing and be able to point out some nature fact or another. My sister would draw or paint, all depending on her mood. Sometimes she would take her Game Boy with her. What about me? I often enjoyed wandering around by myself and being caught up in my imagination. The numerous fantasy worlds I would invent for myself and find happiness in. I spent my days wandering around the shoreline, taking in the beauty of the environment and occasionally talking to myself. It is weird, I know, but it was relaxing at the time. I'm not going to say which river we were staying at. It was a nice yet affordable place. My parents never wanted to spend a lot of money on these family trips. They were always organized when the season was the cheapest. And that, unfortunately, meant that often the weather wouldn't be the best. In fact, a lot of the times it would be raining a lot. Before I set out, I told my parents I was going to walk along the river. My dad was still getting ready and he told me he would come with me. My parents tended to vary on how much independence I would be granted for any particular day. I suspect he wanted the company and to try to teach me how to fish. Something I was actually quite good at. As I got older, I became less patient with the process. And soon, fishing no longer interested me at all. I loved solitude. I was alone with my thoughts during the early morning. And I felt free. I looked to make sure there was nothing to trip on and closed my eyes and kept walking. Ignoring the occasional splash my shoes made in the water, the squish of the mud and the sound of crushed grass. The stones beneath my feet would crack and shift under my weight. The variety of sounds plus the flow of the water were incredibly relaxing. As I walked, I noticed a figure in the water, and at first, I thought she was just relaxing and I was disturbing her. I called out to apologize and she did not answer. Maybe it was a mannequin? She didn't move as I got closer. Her body gently swayed with the motion of the water, gazing upwards at the sky while birds circled above. Her skin was pale with a bluish hue. Arms outstretched, and clothes clung tight in areas where her body rested on the land. Her hair circled and framed her face, almost resembling a halo around her. I stared down at her. She was older than I was at the time, a woman in comparison to my girlhood. Her eyes lingered on mine. There was a smoky haziness to her eyes that I will never forget. It took me a moment to realize what I had seen. I saw... I saw a dead body. 
not at the comfort of a funeral or with the support of my family. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. In movies, people would scream or call the police. I couldn't take my eyes off her. And I couldn't help but feel guilty to see her or anyone in this state. There was a long, dark line across her throat, and I couldn't see anything else. I, I really couldn't see anything besides her eyes. Her lifeless expression, and the water peacefully floating around her. Again, in the movies or on TV, people would scream and soon the police would arrive. But I couldn't scream. Here I was, silently looking down at the nameless woman in her unofficial grave attire. She had been murdered, her life stolen. Why? Who was she? Did the person know or care about what happened to her, or the harm that they had done? Did they feel guilt? Did they feel anything? Her life was... gone. Lost forever. Something that could never be returned to her. I heard someone behind me. I turned to see an unfamiliar man approach me. He hesitated and had an odd smile, when something inside me did not trust. I kept an eye on him. Why wasn't he surprised by the woman? Maybe, maybe he didn't see her yet? He asked if I was okay and gestured for me to come closer. Something felt wrong. So wrong. He wasn't surprised by the dead body floating in the water. Perhaps he already saw it. Maybe death wasn't as strange to him as it was to me. Maybe... Maybe he had already called the police and wanted to keep me away from the crime scene. The world felt like it was spinning. The man's eyes and words were nothing but a blur. I can't tell you how much time passed. I turned to walk towards the man, wanting a feeling of security and safety that I hoped an adult would bring me. When I heard her... I paused and looked down at her face, her unmoving face, one that managed to whisper words of longing to me. The police needed to come and collect her. The man insisted I get closer, and I was unsure whether or not I should go. Finally, the urge and desire for the known reached its peak, and I walked closer to him, unaware of the look in his eye, one that I only now remember. The dead woman's hand grabbed my ankle, held onto it while I screamed and pulled, struggling to escape and desperate not to be pulled into the depths of the water. I didn't want to join her. The water splashed and flowed. Her grip never loosened. My dad, who had been looking for me, heard my screams and ran towards me, embraced me, and only then her grip released me. I looked down at her. The man gave a strange remark and sheepishly disappeared. There was something about him I will never forget. Why did he have to leave right away? When I asked my dad about it years later, all he told me was the girl in the water and my screams. He had heard the scream and rushed to the sound. When I told him about the man, he told me he didn't see anyone else there and he'd been worried because I'd been alone. There was a man. I know there was. I told my dad. The dead woman grabbed my ankle to stop me walking towards the unknown man. My dad told me I must have gotten caught up in the reeds, and that I'd panicked. I couldn't remember any near the corpse. 
The police spoke to me about what I found and told me I was smart for not touching the body. In truth, I was too scared to get closer. I didn't want to get closer. I wasn't brave. I... It didn't end there. I saw reports on the TV about a missing girl's body found. Her name was a blur. All I could remember were her pretty eyes. Her eyes had become clouded, discolored as they stared up lifelessly. She had been murdered, discarded and then found. Who could do that to someone? Steal their life away? Every so often she would visit me in my dreams. It was never the same. There were times when she would appear in the bathtub, leaning on the side of the shower, always near some type of water or a body of water. She was connected to it forever, whether she wanted to be or not. Occasionally, I could hear her whispers, always around the water, yet I could never tell what she was trying to tell me. After a while, all I could hear was the sound of gurgling water and her final gasps of breath. No words. No names. Nothing. There was a time when I would see her regularly. Then it would fade to every couple of months. Then maybe twice a year. Her visits aren't as common now, if they happen at all. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, so the connection isn't as strong or something else has changed. I remember her name. One I will never forget. One that I cannot say and... I am fearful. Maybe she will appear to me again if I say her name. Do I want to see her again? Her murderer has never been found. I hope you enjoy that, my little spooklings. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps me out, and is greatly appreciated. I love reading all your comments. This video was made with the support of my incredible Patreons and channel members. Links below if you'd like to join their ranks. Check out the items at my merch store. Stay safe, my little spooklings. And remember, I'll be watching you.